A significant portion of a quick bid database is the items list. Items are the building blocks of your estimate and can represent material cost, labor costs, and sometimes even equipment. Therefore, items are one of the most complex and vital components of using QuickBid. The items list master window is where you create and maintain all of these items. The items list window lives in the master menu at the top of the screen. Master windows contain database level information, which means the content is usable on every bid in the current database. Once the items list window is open, you'll see the list of all the available items in the current database. QuickBid's manufacturer and trade databases focus only on the items directly produced by the manufacturer or most used by the trade. Missing items are unavoidable, but once you understand how to build items in QuickBid, you can create anything missing from your database. Let's look at what the items list shows us before we dig into how to use it. The first column is unlabeled, but may display a chain link icon on some items. The chain link identifies items that have additional items chained to them. For more information about chains, see the training video on the Item Detail General tab. The following two columns display the unique item code and the section to which the item belongs. The Material Cost Code and Labor Cost Code columns help identify the item type. Is it material? Then it has a material cost code. Is it labor? Then it has a labor cost code. Is it both? Then you'll see both types of cost codes. The type column is a category to identify groups of similar items, like track or stud items, for example. Next is a manufacturer column. Many items in your database may be generic. In that case, the manufacturer column is empty. Now you have the description of the item. The description is critical, especially when it comes time to create your own items. Finally, the last three fields contain cost information. You see the cost per a specific quantity and the date the cost was last updated. Lines are color-coded to identify item types quickly. For example, items in black don't contain any styles, but they may still come in different sizes. Blue items have styles or styles with sizes in their record, and pink items are mixtures. See the training videos on the Sizing tab in the Item Detail window to learn more about styles, sizes, and mixtures. Now speaking of styles and sizes, there's a Columns button at the bottom of the screen where you can add additional columns and remove others. The three additional columns add sizes, styles, and product numbers to the item list. Be aware that adding these extra columns adds additional detail to the items list, and potentially several hundred new item lines. A single item may have many different sizes, styles, or product numbers built into the record. For example, consider a ceiling tile that may come in several sizes, edge styles, or various colors. Rather than seeing the single line and digging deeper into the record to find this detail, Adding the sizes, styles, and product numbers columns pulls all of that data out and displays each one on a new line. So you may see an identical item code listed multiple times. The extra information may be beneficial to you, or it could be overwhelming. Still, it's as easy as unchecking the boxes if you find the detail too much to handle. Now, with all these items, the biggest challenge facing you on the items list comes down to finding the item you need. Luckily, there are several tools at your disposal to help. First, there are filters across the top of the screen, section, material cost code, labor cost code, type, and manufacturer. You can use these filters individually or with each other to target a specific set of items. If you don't want a filter, you can sort lines by clicking the column headings. You can reverse that sort order if you click the column heading again. The sorted column contains a triangle. The triangle pointing up means the field is in ascending order and pointing down means descending order. You can quickly jump to a section in the sorted column by typing a key on your keyboard. For example, suppose you sorted by the description column and type a letter on your keyboard. In that case, you immediately jump to the first item where the description starts with that letter. If you don't want to deal with filters or sorting, you can search for an item using the search field in the upper right. Whatever you type in the search field searches the code, section, cost codes, type, and manufacturer fields, so there's a lot of flexibility. At the bottom of the screen are buttons that let you add new items, edit items, delete items, print the list of items, or duplicate existing items. We don't suggest you add new items from scratch all that often. Instead, try to find an item that's like the one you need and make a copy of it using the duplicate button. Then you can edit the duplicate item and change only the necessary fields. You can save time by keeping the basic information from the original item, like the section, cost codes, types, calculations, and maybe even styles or sizes.
If you never use an item, or it's no longer available, you can delete it using the delete button. But if an item's in use in an assembly, mixture, or chain, you can't delete it. However, you can right-click on an item and select Show Item Where in Use from the context menu. A window displays all the places using the item. Once the item is removed from all the places using it, you can delete it. The context menu also contains several options to update items or groups of items without having to go into the item's master records one at a time. Update material pricing allows you to update the price of any selected items by a percentage. The remaining options open the corresponding master screen for cost codes, divisions and sections, item types, and manufacturers. This process is helpful when you need to move entire groups of items into new sections, change their type, or update cost codes, for example.